welcome to Torsey Waldridge Kitchen Gardener. I do appreciate we're halfway through the month, but here are a few jobs that you guys can crack on with for the month of July. And stay on until the end of the video where I will be doing a tour of the veg garden. This is the first year that I've actually managed to get round to staking all of my Brussels sprouts. So I've just got a nice sturdy pole that I've whacked into the ground. If you do them when they're quite young, they're easier to stake into the ground when they're this size it gets a little bit fiddly and you can break some of the branches but I haven't tied them in yet I'm just going to wait until it grows up until I can get to the stem when some of the lower leaves are most probably removed I'll be able to tie that in during the winter months we do get a lot of high winds and it does bring a lot of the Brussels sprouts down so it's a really good idea especially if you're exposed to high winds to be able to stake and tie them to a stake it also stops the buttons from exploding into little flowers which is one of the problems that you get when it does get root rock or root disturbance so I'm really chuffed that I actually got the time to do it this year and hopefully we'll have some nice upright Brussels sprouts going through into the winter months. It's really important to keep on top of harvesting your courgette purely because if you find that one hides underneath a leaf or it gets a bit too big, the plant will actually stop producing for you. So make sure you thoroughly check your plants over, harvest what needs to be taken away, and your courgettes will then last you throughout the whole of the growing season. Also as well, when it comes to harvesting courgettes, I've just got a little Swiss army knife, but it's got the hook end on it, and I find that you're able to then get in between the plants a lot easier than a flat blade, and do less damage to the plants and easier harvesting. If you guys are growing Chinese cabbages, you will notice they're quite an open growing plant. I wait until they get to about this size where they've got a reasonable heart and they're quite upright in shape. Some of the others are quite open and they're not re ready yet to be tied up. But if you go to a supermarket, you'll notice the heart of a Chinese cabbage is quite sort of blanched and really nice and white. And to be able to achieve that, you want to be able to get all of your leaves and you want to bring them up so it's basically a way of excluding the light from the center of the cabbage to then creating that really nice white center it is a bit fiddly just grab a bit of twine wrap it around your cabbage tie it up and there you have so it doesn't look particularly attractive as if you were just to leave the whole row but this is the best way of getting that center nice and white and then obviously you can just untie it uh, or harvest it whenever you want and you'll have a nice blanched white center of your Chinese cabbage I had a pretty disastrous year when it came to the raw beans. They were really late getting out because I wasn't around. Um, they grew really leggy. They never bushed out as much as I wanted them to. And then they got hit with black fly, which was absolutely rife over the whole plant. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to keep the black fly under control. So I did the last of the harvest the other day and I thought, you know what? It's sometimes best just to cut your losses. So I ripped out the whole lot and I'm now going to get the rotavator on the bed and I'm just going to whack in a load of salad crops and a few more brassicas that I want to get out and the same as with the garlic so once I've harvested my garlic my crop rotation is that my purple sprout and broccoli goes in after the garlic's come out so I've got a bit of, bit of weeding and a bit, bit of bed prep to do to get these guys ready for the next crops to go in to see us up to and through those winter months. I've now finished harvesting the remainder of the garlic crop and it's not been too much of a bad year for garlic. I do struggle a little bit. We've got quite heavy soil here and garlic does like a nice sandy soil to grow in. So the, you know, the bulbs that I grow will never be to the maximum size that they could potentially get to but it won't stop me from growing garlic. They're a fantastically easy crop to grow. This is a chalk white. I absolutely love the red ribbing in it. And that's what I love is 
all the different colours, the flavours and the strengths of garlics that you can grow instead of the shop bought stuff. So these guys now are going to go and be weighed and then I'm going to stick them in the glass house. I would usually leave them to dry on the surface of the soil but the weather's a bit hit and miss at the moment so I'll put them in somewhere nice and dry to get them cured and ready for storage to see us through the winter months. Also if you saw me in, an, in a previous video I was a little bit worried about the spring garlic. We didn't really have many frosts or any hard ground frosts. And I was worried that the bulbs wouldn't split but the majority of the crop does actually seem to have split so I don't think it takes much for um, the frost we don't need much of a heavy frost to get garlic bulbs to split so that's always something really good to keep in mind that you don't actually need a really strong frost to get the bulbs to split and with the crop that I've produced this year I'm pretty chuffed So this is where the Sen Shui first early onions were but they've all been harvested now and I've got a load of brassicas in so I've got some winter cabbages under here, January King which are absolutely beautiful and they have got a lovely colour to their leaf. I've got some Swedes in here, I've just dug up the last of the carrots so I've sowed a load more carrots. I've got half of my batch of shallots that I've harvested. So I was growing um, carrots samurai, red samurai. I'm not actually happy with the variety at all. So I'm actually just gonna stick to the bog standard orange carrots that I know are really productive. We've got um, my very lately sown um, onions, which seem to be doing all right. And we've still got a bit of time for the onions. So I'm just gonna leave them to crack on and do their thing. So this is the brassica bed which actually is never ever open or exposed like this but I've been watering and I find sometimes the watering is easier when the EnviroMesh is off so obviously all of the EnviroMesh has been removed for the moment just while I do a bit of watering and also as well I can get in there and have a good look at what is going on with the crops so we've got pretty much like everything in this bed which is brilliant so I've got uh, cabbages, Chinese cabbage, we've got cauliflowers, green Chinese cabbage. This was um, calabrese's, which is your summer broccoli. So it gets the lovely, beautiful, hearty heads. Once you've cut out the main head, it starts producing little stems. So it's almost like a little purple sprouting broccoli. And that will actually see you up until the frost start to hit. So it's great just to hold on to that plant. Red cabbage, they just take so long to develop, but they are worth waiting for when you get them. Uh, some more cauliflowers, my Brussels sprout patch, and then uh, I've got four different varieties of kale. So I've got like the Cavalier Neuro style kale. I've got uh, purple kale. I've got another green kale, but it's got white in the leaves, and then just your normal winter boar which is your green kale um, but I've got a couple of rogue um, carelet plants in there which is fine but um, these things happen don't they courgettes and squashes are going mad so these are actually summer squashes around the outside and then a massive pile of all different varieties of courgettes which they've just started producing so I'm really really happy about that the celeriac's doing really good, the celery's doing fine, got some more carrots bunged in there. Just planted out the last of my peas and monge twos that I sowed at the end of June. Just the normal successional sowing of radishes, spinach, herbs. I just keep them in, as soon as a little bit comes free in a bed, I just put another drill of another herb or a vegetable in there. The beans are taking a little bit longer. They were sown quite late on in the season, but I'm not too worried about that because there is so much sometimes to get on with. Bean picking is something that takes up a huge amount of time. So these are baby corns. So they're not the normal sweet corn variety. They're just the little baby corn. So they're, they always grow absolutely humongous. And intercropped there, I have uh, three or four different varieties of pumpkins. The 
Around the back there, there was a load of sunflowers that I did for the cut flowers. Uh, they've all finished now, so I've just planted those up with more spinach, salad crops. Her beds are looking great. They're actually looking really good this year, so I'm quite pleased with that. Nice and colourful. My parsnips germinated, woohoo! And we've got something, so they're obviously not as big as what they would be, but they were planted so very late. I was, I'm a bit worried that they might not actually get to a d good parsnip size, but you know, we've got some parsnips going on for the winter months, which is great. A load of beetroot, which I've just started harvesting. Summer leeks have been absolutely brilliant smell great Stanford F1 is just the normal variety that I grow and then like I say as soon as the bed space becomes available I've just started sowing more herbs more salads and then we've got a uh, Swiss chard bit of rocket potatoes have done absolutely brilliantly started harvesting the salad potatoes because these guys went in uber duber late as well and then the broad beans were in this bed so I've taken all of that out because of the black fly and the uh, purple sprout and broccoli's all in, ready going. We've got a bit more swede. Some of the gaps that we have, I allow space for uh, wallflowers because they're for the main gardens and there's not very much space apart from in here where we can sow in the nice rows and get the quantities of wallflowers that we need for our spring displays in the main gardens. Just a load of salad crops. This is where the garlic was, so just whacked in a load of salad crops just to keep everything going. More wallflowers. This is the squash bed, which they're sort of coming on quite nicely now. And here we've got um, more salad crops, the sweet corn, and I've got the butternut squash in here. Um, sweet peas are looking absolutely stunning as always and that's pretty much it for the veg garden so I'm quite impressed with how it's all looking lavender's just lavender and it just smells hanging with bees step over apple trees are being really productive the fruit cage is absolutely wonderful it has produced so much fruit it's just been a pure delight and there has been kilos of it. I think I picked 14 kilos of black currants. So hopefully they will make some lovely jam with that. And this bed here is obviously where I've been doing part of the cut flowers. So all in all, it's been really quite productive this year. There has been quite a few lossages and things that haven't germinated particularly well, but all in all, not a bad one.